What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having an awesome day. It's tater time here on the homestead. We got to start getting our taters ready to plant sometime this week. It's February 12th today, which means we probably won't get them planted on Valentine's Day, but we are going to get them planted sometime this week. Go ahead and get them babies in the ground as early as we can. So today we're going to be talking about all things taters tater growing tips we're going to be cutting up some of our taters for planting i'm going to tell you about some different experiments we're going to do in our tater plot this year and then at the end of the video we're going to get our tater plot ready for planting in the next few days now i assume most of you out there watching do grow taters in your garden but i know some people don't I've heard over the years many people say that they don't grow taters just because it's not cost effective for them. Seed potatoes in some people's eyes are expensive and for sure some of these specialty varieties can be a little pricey. Most of the times you can go to the seed and feed store and buy a big bag of red taters for $20 or so. But if you want some of these more specialty varieties, you'll pay a little bit more for those seed potatoes. So a lot of people might not think it's worth it to grow their own potatoes because you can go buy a bag of potatoes in the grocery store for pretty cheap. But this is what I say, you know, gardening is a hobby. Yeah, we do it to grow our own food, but it's a hobby. Hobbies aren't always profitable, but there are much less profitable hobbies than gardening golf for example would be one i'm not a golfer i've got a lot of friends that are golfers but golfing is a lot more expensive than gardening in my opinion so we don't always you know come out on top cost wise but we garden because it's fun and then we like the rewards of digging those taters and enjoying them with our family now last year we grew, I don't know, six, seven, or eight different varieties. We planted five pounds of seed potatoes and then we weighed our end harvest to see kind of what our multiple was or what our return on investment was. And it varied between varieties. For some varieties, planting five pounds of seed potatoes, we got around 40 pounds of potatoes harvested. Some varieties it was closer to 50 and 60, and I think there was one variety that was upwards around 70 or 80. So it varies a little bit between varieties or among varieties, but you can figure for the most part, if you have a good potato crop, you plant five pounds of seed potatoes, you'll probably get around 50 pounds of potatoes harvested. So it's not a complete loss. I'm not saying that you're gonna break even or anything like that. But if you consider the fun and enjoyment of it, I think everybody should be growing taters. So this year we're planting seven different variety of taters. We've got three varieties that we've grown before and four varieties that we have. Now for these varieties that we have grown before, we're using our own seed stock. So we planted a small little patch of fall taters this past year in 2021, and they did all right enough to give us some nice seed stock for this year so for those we've got some Yukon Golds here and then we've got some German Butterballs here which are these smaller ones like you see there and then we've got some red taters here and this bag is a little bit of a mix of red Norlin and red Viking but red taters for the most part there so we've got those three varieties from our own seed stock that we saved so we had taters from the spring that were still good in the fall, planted them in the fall, harvested them, and now we've got our own seed stock. And that's a good way to do it if you can manage to grow a fall crop of taters. And then we've got four different varieties that we got from Wood Prairie Farms up in Maine, and they grow certified organic seed potatoes. Really good people up there and really good potatoes. So when you buy from them, they're the grower. They've grown them there on their farm, taking good care of them, and then they ship them to you. And if you haven't gotten your seed potatoes yet, you can go to their website, woodprairie.com, use the coupon code LazyDogFarm to get 5% off. So those varieties we got from Wood Prairie, we've got Kuka Gold, we've got Baltic Rose, we've got Caribe, and we've got one called Huckleberry Gold. So we like to plant a bunch of different tater varieties for a couple different reasons. One being we just enjoy the assortment of it. We like red taters with the white flesh. We like other taters with the yellow or gold flesh. We like big taters. We like little taters. It's nice to just have an assortment there. The second reason has to do with the maturity dates. So you have early maturing taters, mid maturing taters, and late maturing taters. And we like to plant a little bit of each. That way we're not having to harvest our whole tater plot at one time. If you plant a big plot of just red taters, which are 
tend to be early maturing taters. You're gonna have to dig them all at one time. And I'd rather just do a row every week or so and just kind of knock them out slowly as opposed to having to dig them all at one time. And as far as the maturity dates go with the varieties we're gonna plant, we've got two early maturing varieties. One of those being the Caribe here and then the other one being our red tater assortment from our own seed stock. And the Caribe is supposed to be really, really early. I think maybe even earlier than those red taters. And then for the mid maturing taters, we have the Huckleberry Gold, the Baltic Rose here, and our Yukon Gold. Then there's some that are kind of in the middle between mid and late, they call them mid to late, and that would be the Kuka Gold. And then lastly, we've got the late maturing tater, which is the German Butterball. So we've got a nice assortment, one or two varieties for each kind of maturity window there, so we're not having to dig them all at one time. Now one thing you do have to be careful about with these late maturing varieties like this German Butterball, especially if you live down south where it can get hot real quick in spring, you gotta make sure to be timely when you're planting these. If you mess around and plant one of these late maturing varieties, late, down here in the south, it's gonna get hot too quick, it's gonna zap the plants, and your taters aren't gonna be very big. So what wraps up taters, what makes them ready to harvest, is when those plants start dying back, and that's usually triggered by heat. So when it gets hot, in late spring or early summer, whenever that happens for you, those tater plants start dying back and that's when you have to harvest them. So if you plant these varieties that take longer to mature, if you plant them late, your growing window's not gonna be that big and you're gonna end up with small taters. So the later the maturing tater, the more timely you need to be with planting it. Some of these early maturing taters like the Caribe it, they're a little more forgiving as far as when you need to plant them. But these later maturing varieties, if you want to make some decent sized taters, you need to plant them early. Now, if you live in the middle of the country or the northern part of the country where your summers are pretty mild, your late spring is pretty mild, you really don't have anything to worry about. But down here in the south where it gets real hot real quick, we have to worry about that. And while we're talking about maturity dates, let's cover this whole determinate versus indeterminate potato thing. And I think a lot of people get confused by this because they don't realize that the whole determinate versus indeterminate thing is pretty region specific. So down here in the South, there's really no such thing as a determinate versus an indeterminate potato. You just have early maturing potatoes and late maturing potatoes. Now, if you live up north, maybe even in the Pacific Northwest somewhere where the summers are pretty mild or, you know, up there in the Northeast somewhere, then your potatoes, it's never going to get hot enough to really zap them. And so the potatoes will keep growing some of these late maturing varieties will, like the German Butterball, for instance. So some people will show how you can plant these things and you can just keep adding soil to them and the plants will keep growing upright and then you can eventually dump out this big container and you just have this long strand of potatoes. The reason they can do that is because their summers are mild. It's not getting hot enough to really zap the plants. Down here, the heat's gonna zap the plants anyways. So you can add as much dirt to them as you want. When it gets hot, they're toast. So the indeterminate thing doesn't really apply down here. It does apply up north. And if you want to do that, where you can just grow a huge strand of potatoes, you can pick one of these later maturing varieties, which are indeterminate in some places, and do that. So now let's talk about getting your taters ready for planting. We'll talk about cutting taters, chitting taters. Do you need to do either of those or can you just throw the whole taters in the ground? So this is one of those Huckleberry Gold taters from Wood Prairie Farm. So it's got a purple outside and then the inside there has a nice pretty gold color as you see. Now these have some tiny little sprouts on them as you see there, but not big sprouts. And personally, I don't like to plant taters with big sprouts on them. I like them about like that, really don't like them any bigger than that. And I'm fine planting a tater where you can barely see the eyes on it. And the reason I like it that way is because when I'm toting around a bucket of seed taters or seed tater pieces, I'm a little rough with them. And sometimes those longer sprouts will break off on me when I'm planting or transporting them or whatever. So I like them kind of short like that and they end up growing out just fine. Other people prefer to chip their potatoes 
and let them grow some longer sprouts before they plant them give them a little head start i don't find that's necessary but plenty of people do it so just pick whatever works for you i'd rather have the shorter sprouts here so i don't have to worry about breaking them off during the planting process now as far as cutting taters go a lot of people ask is that necessary and if you've ever watched any videos of the big boys planting taters they don't cut them they just ride along the row there and throw whole taters in the fur they don't cut them up or anything i think the reason most gardeners do cut them up is to kind of stretch their seed supply further you can plant more taters if you cut them up you get more seed pieces than just planting a whole tater and just to give you an idea of how many seed taters you need for a certain amount of garden space i've found and this varies a little bit from one variety to the next that if you get five pounds of seed taters and you cut them up like we're about to do today you can have enough to plant a 30 foot row at least sometimes you'll have more than that but five pounds cut up is usually plenty for a 30 foot row that's putting the seed pieces about eight inches apart or so along the row so we just like to cut them in pieces they don't have to be evenly sized or anything and we want just about you know two eyes per piece there and so some of these pieces are a lot different shape than other pieces and the size of the seed potato piece has nothing to do with your eventual harvest when you dig up your taters or pull up those tater plants you a lot of times see that seed potato piece sitting right there this thing is really just giving the plant enough energy to get some roots going and get some leaves going there and then once those roots kind of get into the soil there then they're obtaining nutrients and water from the soil and not the seed tater piece here so if you want to kind of stretch your seed potato stock you can certainly cut them up if you want to plant whole taters you can do that as well now if you are going to cut them up i would not recommend cutting them and then putting them right in the soil you need to let these things heal for a couple days or what we call superize the skin right here or this flesh that's been cut will kind of harden and seal off there and that kind of protects it from any fungal diseases or anything in the soil some people will recommend coating them with sulfur uh, i want to say i've heard people using lime i want to say um, i've heard people use a lot of different stuff that they coat them with before planting We've coated them with some fir bark in the past, like ground up bark from fir trees. That seemed to work pretty well. But I don't know that that is completely necessary. If that's a step you want to take, go for it. I think just giving them a few days to kind of crust over on this open wound here is just plenty fine, sufficient, and then you can put them in the ground. So we got all our huckleberry golds cut up there and I can already tell that's going to be plenty for a 30 foot row. We might have a few leftovers we can give away to some friends who have just a few containers in the backyard or whatever. But that's going to be plenty for a 30 foot row. So five pounds of seed taters cut up gives you plenty of taters. And what I'll do is I'll just dump these back in this bag right here that's got some holes in it, some good airflow. I could leave them in this bucket here if I wanted to, but I don't have seven of these buckets so i'll dump them back in this bag let them heal over in here i may every day come in and kind of shuffle around the bag make sure none of them are sticking together but this bag will hold them just fine and let them heal over until they're ready to plant we just kind of ease them back in here and make sure i put my label in here so i can remember what they are We'll just let them sit there for probably two or three days and then they should be ready to plant. So now let's take a look at these Baltic Rose taters, see what they look like. So it looks kind of like a red tater on the outside there, maybe a little deeper red, kind of between red and purple. And we've got a few little eyes and sprouts we can see on there. Open it up whoa those are really really yellow those are more yellow than the huckleberry golds are those are really pretty that looks like that's gonna be a good eating tater right there so back to the whole thing about cutting taters versus not cutting taters we're gonna do some experiments this year and see if it really matters see how much different the yield is cutting them versus not cutting them now i'm not going to do that experiment on any of these wood prairie varieties but i am going to do it on some of these varieties that we saved our own seed stock with we have a little more taters to play around with 
So what I've always read is that if you plant a whole tater, you've got a lot more sprouts in one place and a lot more plant concentrated there and that you get a little bit of overcrowding, you'll make more taters because obviously you've got more plants or sprouts, but those taters will be smaller because they're kind of crowded there. If you plant pieces like this, then you'll get fewer taters but bigger taters and i've never compared it you know right beside each other did like an a b test to really see so i don't really know if that's true or not that's just what i've read so this year what we're going to do i think we'll do it with the red taters we have in the yukon golds is we're going to plant half a row of cut up taters and half a row of whole taters. They'll be grown under the same conditions and then we'll see what our harvest is. We'll see if our harvest is significantly different between the ones we cut up and the ones we didn't cut up. We can also look at the size of the taters to see if that matters. Now there's no doubt, as I mentioned earlier, you can stretch your tater row further if you cut them up. But we're gonna see if that's really necessary. Maybe just planting the whole taters in less row space or you know shorter row length will give you just as many taters as cutting them up and stretching them out to a longer row i don't know but we're going to see so there's our baltic rose taters cut up and i just can't get over how pretty those are i think this might be my favorite variety we'll have to see how the yield is and how they taste when we eat some but just on looks alone i'm really liking what i see here now let's take a look at this cuca gold here or kuka gold. I don't know if it's kuka or kuka. These are pretty big taters here. So that's bigger than a Yukon for the most part. Those have some decent little sprouts on them there. We can cut these into several pieces. Probably get four pieces out of this one tater here. If we look at the inside of those, they look a lot like a Yukon gold does on the inside. Not quite as bright yellow as the Baltic rose there. Put a nice color on those and I bet that'll make a fine bacon tater there. Now another experiment we're gonna do in addition to comparing cut taters versus planting whole taters has to do with comparing growing taters with straw versus growing taters with dirt. Now we're gonna plant all these in the soil, but I can't remember when it was. It was several months ago. We had a viewer on a video say that he plants potatoes just by placing them on top of the soil and then he covers them with straw and he basically heals them with more straw as they grow. And I can see where that would be a great option for people growing in containers, or raised beds, you know, small spaces. Maybe if you were older and you couldn't hoe the dirt and pull up the dirt around the plants as easy as you used to could and putting straw around them would be a lot easier on your body. So we're gonna compare that. We're gonna pair growing them in the soil just like we normally do. And then we're gonna do a half a row with just adding straw on top of it and see if our yield is the same. And if it is, that may be a great option for some of you out there just to add straw instead of healing them up with dirt like we traditionally do. And there's our Kuka Golds there. So we got plenty for a 30 foot row just like with the others. And then the last wood prairie variety we have here is the Caribe. And this is the extra, extra early potato. It is supposed to be really, really forgiving. If you mess around and plant your taters late because it matures so early, you'll still be fine. You'll still make some nice taters before things get too hot and the heat zaps the plants. So these here have a lot of eyes on them. This is a purple tater on the outside. I'm pretty sure it's a white tater on the inside. We'll see here. Yeah, so nice bright white tater on the inside. Purple outside there. We can cut these in quite a few pieces because we got a bunch of eyes on these things. So when I was talking to Jim at Wood Prairie, he said this is the variety they recommend to people who were kind of beginner gardeners, just kind of trying taters for the first time because it's really easy to grow. It's more forgiving. And as he was saying, you know, a lot of people that are new to gardening, they hadn't quite figured out their timing yet. And they may not decide to plant taters until they see a bunch of tater planting videos on YouTube or hear other people planting taters or talking about taters. And so they may be shoot three, four weeks later than everybody else, but that's okay if you've got this Caribe here because it's more forgiving. If you do plant late, you'll be just fine. 
And I could also see where that would be helpful if for some reason your soil was really wet, you're getting a lot of rain, you couldn't get your soil to dry out, get the taters planted. If you've got this shorter maturing variety that's more forgiving, even if you have to wait a month from your normal planting date for your soil to dry out, you can still get them in the ground and get a nice harvest. So there's our Caribe taters cut up there, and that takes care of all the wood peri varieties that we have. And now we'll start working on the varieties from our own seed stock, wherever I put them back here. So these are the ones we're gonna be doing kind of the experiments I mentioned with. So with the red taters here, which we have plenty of, we're gonna plant half a row of whole taters, half a row of cut taters. With these Yukon gold taters here, same thing. I got plenty of them, so we're gonna do half a row of whole taters, half a row of cut taters. And then for these German butter balls, which are kind of small because we didn't have the greatest fall harvest, I'm not even going to cut those. We're just going to plant those whole there, but we're going to do half the row, hit them with dirt, half the row, cover them with straw, and we can see if there's any differences in yield there. So a couple of nice experiments going on. We'll grow all the wood prairie taters just the same way we always do with some of these from our own seed stock. We'll do a little experimentation and see if any of these tater tips we hear about really matter. All right, so we got our red taters cut up there. We don't need many of those, just enough for 15 row feet. The other 15 row feet will be whole taters. And then I messed up and told y'all a story about the Yukon Gold test. So I thought I had Yukon Gold taters here, but when I cut them open, See, that's white. This is a Kennebec. I couldn't remember from our fall harvest. I knew one of the two, either Kennebec or Yukon Gold, we didn't get many of, and turns out it was a Yukon Gold. So we'll be doing that test of cut taters versus whole taters with the Kennebec, not the Yukon Gold. I did find one Yukon Gold in there. They're pretty easy to identify. The eyes on the Yukon Gold, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, are pink and then the inside of them is yellow. So if we contrast these two here, this yellow one, that's Yukon Gold, that's Kennebec. So we'll be doing our experiment of cut versus hole with the Kennebec and then the red taters. All right, so we got our taters cut up. Now it's time to get our tater dirt ready. And I should mention, once you cut up the potatoes like that, if you are gonna cut them up, they're usually good for several weeks. So if you cut them up, and for some reason you get a lot of rain and can't get them planted, it's all right. As long as you keep them dry, keep them ventilated, kind of shuffle them around in the bucket or the bag every few days or so, they'll be fine for several weeks. So you don't have to plant, you know, three days after you cut them up. You've got some time there. Now our 30 by 35 tater plot here has a tarp on it currently. We had a cover crop of mustard on it in the fall and into the winter. We always like to grow that cover crop of mustard where we're gonna be planting our taters. Helps a lot with our diseases and stuff. We mowed that mustard down several, several videos ago. We lightly tilled it into the soil to do the whole biofumigation thing. I'll put a video up here if you missed that. You can check that out. So today we need to take the tarp off and we need to cultivate it one more time and then we'll be ready to plant taters. Now if you're planting taters in containers or raised beds, you usually don't have to worry about this because those drain pretty well. But if you're planting taters in the soil, in the ground like we are, then you wanna make sure you're planting them in dry soil. You don't wanna plant taters in wet dirt and you wanna keep that soil dry as best as you can until those taters start to sprout. If you get a lot of rain after you plant your taters, they can rot. I've had it happen before, I've seen it happen. So we wanna kinda of pick a tater planting window where we're gonna have some dry weather for a few days. We don't wanna plant them if we're about to get a bunch of rain. But I also have this tarp here in my arsenal that I can use to keep the soil dry. So we're gonna pull back this tarp and cultivate this plot, but I'm not gonna fold up my tarp yet. I'm gonna leave it on the edge of the plot over there and our forecast looks pretty good. We might get some rain this coming weekend a little bit. Don't know how much, 
but I'm going to leave the tarp over there and after I plant these taters this week if I see we're going to get a lot of rain I can put that tarp back on top of it and keep those taters from getting waterlogged and rotten and then pull it back off after the rain and then the soil should stay pretty dry there for me the tarp is also another good way just to keep your soil dry so that when you're ready to plant taters your soil is dry enough to plant taters i did this last year we were having a lot of rain in february and i just put the tarp on the plot that way it wasn't just staying wet and i could pull off the tarp the soil was still pretty dry and i could plant taters when i wanted to plant them instead of waiting on the soil to dry out so first let's pull back this tarp and see how much of that mustard cover crop has been extinguished there before we go grab the tiller so we can see here the tarp did a pretty good job at finishing off that mustard cover crop everything looks pretty much dead no uh, signs of live cover crop stubble out there now over on this side here things look pretty good and dry although we probably need to chop it up just a little bit more get some fluffy soil for those taters right here things look a little soggy so giving it one more light cultivation will help dry that out a little bit and hopefully it'll be dry in a few days when we get ready to plant taters so just like any root crop just like carrots taters grow best in well-drained kind of fluffy soil so I'm going to go grab the tiller, we're going to fluff it up a little bit, help dry it out, and should have some nice soft soil come tater planting time. Come in from the darkness, don't let it stay too long. Let go of the ego, it's harder to feel alone. All right, all right, all right. That looks like that's going to be some mighty fine tater dirt right there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we ain't supposed, that's the Southern word for you, spelled apostrophe S-P-O-S-E-D. We ain't supposed to get any rain between now and the time when I'm going to plant these taters. Now, we may get some rain shortly after I plant these taters, and I got my tarp back there just in case that happens. I can put the tarp on there, keep it somewhat dry, and then pull it back off and these guys can you know sprout whenever they want to sometimes it can take up to two to three weeks before we start seeing vegetation emerge from the soil now when we tarp that other plot over there where we put down the alfalfa pellets i told you that you really don't want to pull back the tarp till and then plant because when you till you just stirred up more weed seeds in the case of this plot here we had already lightly cultivated at one time so we'd already kind of stirred up the weed seed bank and hopefully killed those off of the tarp and the other thing is with potatoes we don't really have a whole lot of weed issues because we're constantly hilling them and throwing more dirt up onto the row so we don't have a lot of weed issues with potatoes and my weed seed bank in here i know is pretty low so i'm not worried about that as much as i might be in some of the other plots so it probably won't be on the next video, but hopefully the video after that, it'll be tater time for sure. We'll be getting these puppies in the ground, doing all our different kind of experimental setups there to compare all these different tater growing methods. And if you've got any preliminary predictions on our experiments, I'd love to hear about those in the comments below. Do you think we're going to see a significant difference in the cut taters versus the whole taters? Or a significant difference in the soil grown taters versus the straw grown taters? And also let me know how you get your taters ready for planting. You cut them, let them heal. Do you coat them with something like sulfur, lime, fir bark, or whatever? Do you chit them? Do you want big sprouts when you plant your taters? I know everybody's a little bit different, but let me know how you like to do it. If you haven't gotten your seed taters yet, you can find our affiliate link for Wood Prairie Farms down in the description below. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to use that coupon code LAZYDOGFARM to get a discount. I would highly recommend that Baltic Rose variety. That's a beautiful looking potato. It's got to taste great. It looks so good. And if you're a beginner tater grower, you might want to try something like that Caribe that's a little more forgiving. And don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where we've got recipes, our garden blog, recommended products, and even some cool Lazy Dog Farm merch. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Over-well. Mm -hmm. by the beauty of
your life. 